Right, today we are going to be looking at the PMG2, also known as the GP5M, and I believe also the GP6. I've had a few people request these, but I've never had them up until now, even though you can get them fairly cheaply. So, this mask is sort of a combination hybrid mask where the Russians wanted to adopt or adapt masks they already had to make them more useful. So, if you look at one of these masks, what's the immediate thing you think of? A GP5. It is essentially a GP5 with ear holes moulded onto the rubber and a voice diaphragm. So the mask is basically a hybrid of earlier Soviet masks that they wanted to adapt and make better. So you get the situation where the GP5 is being issued to the civilian population and fallout shelters as a civil defence mask. And it's a very, very practical and cost effective mask. It does its job and it's cheap to make. The military at this point aren't really using the GP-5. I think some branches of the Soviet army were certainly issued GP-5s when they had nothing else to give them, but it wasn't intended as a military mask. You have a complicated mask that boils down to being called the M41, which the East Germans and the Polish are certainly using. I believe the Russians are as well, but I've never really heard what the full name of the Russian one is. Which is a mask like this, with a bigger bit down here, that connects to a hose and a canister. So what the Russians wanted was a mask to replace that, and what they ended up getting was a mask called the PMG, which I've talked about before but I'll show you now. So what we have here is a PMG, which is the Metrocop mask from Half-Life 2. You'll notice that the moulding on the rubber means it's actually got a facial structure, unlike the sort of GP5 type masks, which means it would have been more expensive to produce. You've got your exhale valve here, you've actually got a voice diaphragm here, and you've got a filter intake here. However, the problem with the entire mask being made of rubber is, despite you've got the better lenses on these, the sort of type the SHMS has, because the filter intake's sort of here and the mask made of rubber, and you've got basically a big GP5 canister that goes on the side, it weighs the mask down to the side like this, as well as it costing more to produce. So the Russians obviously wanted a fix to that. So this is what they've come up with. So in a sense, the Russians have combined the GP5 on the right, with the PMG on the left to make the PMG2 or the GP5M or the GP6 depending on what you want to call it. So as you can see that's the GP5 and here is the GP5M or PMG2 or GP6 whichever one you call it. I think its official name is PMG2 if it was issued to soldiers, if it was issued to as a civil defence thing they call it the GP5M or GP6. Because I can't find any evidence of another mask being called the GP6, I'm assuming this was the GP6 before they had the much more redesigned GP7 later on. So, I'll unscrew the filter from this so you can see better. But what you essentially have with this mask is a GP5, where the ear part is on the GP5, you've actually not got any rubber at all. It's moulded to be like that. And then you've got the same intake exhale valve. However, on the front, they've lifted the same voice diaphragm from the SHMS or the MM1 sort of tank mask. So again, they're using stuff they've already got. They're not making a special voice diaphragm for the mask. They're simply using their older voice diaphragms with this mask. So logistically, they don't have to produce more stuff. They can just fit them together and make a much cheaper issue mask. So the idea is with a PMG2 that you've got a very cheap to produce mask, which is essentially a GP5, with a voice diaphragm on it. The filter can sit underneath and you've got a lightweight gas mask, because I think that's what PMG means in Russian when it's translated as basically lightweight infantry gas mask. It does all the jobs it needs to do. So we're going to test it. So I'll first show you them on. I've got both the black and the white one, or the grey one. Basically, what happened was I was looking on eBay for them, most sellers on eBay were charging about 15 to 20 pounds for them with all the kit. And then I found a seller in Lithuania for about 17 pounds, and then that's including the postage. He was doing a pair of black and um, grey ones for about yeah, 17 pounds that came with everything but the bags. So it came with two filters, which I'm not obviously going to use, and two sets of the demisting sort of anti fouling lenses to put on the inside. So there we go. I am now going to show you what both of these masks look like on. Then we're going to put the Polish ABEC filter on and test one of the masks. Alright, so let's have a look at these masks. I'll do the grey one first. 
So what we have is basically like a GP5, but you can see it's got a voice diaphragm on that seems to work fairly well actually. My ears come through these holes here in the side of the mask, and you've got the intake exhale there. As you can see it's pressurised, it works. These ones are a little bit grubby where I've got from, um, them from like the cellar, they've obviously not been in great condition in the warehouse, but they still work. I've cleaned them up a bit and I'm sure I could clean them up a bit more if I wanted to make them look a bit better. But yeah, overall this is quite a clever mask. It's the Russians being cheap and effective. They've got the GP5. They said we've got this mask of PMG. Can we just adapt the GP5s in production to be a military mask? As I said, you'll notice the bottom of this is the same as the GP5. It's actually not the more expensive to produce, more metallic sort of mass production one. So like most of the Soviet masks, it was made in both black and grey white rubber. Take that one off. Now an interesting thing is this latex that they use actually smells slightly different inside on the black model. I don't know why that is. I'm guessing it's not quite the same rubber. However, both masks are exactly the same in terms of effectiveness. They both work, you know, exactly as well. The voice diaphragm seems to work well. Now, one thing um, that people complain about with these, they say the ears are exposed. That means you're going to get, you know, gas in your ears when you're attacked by gas. That's actually a bit of a fallacy because the GP5 does cover the ears and so do many of the other Soviet masks. However, if you're wearing this with a full NBC hood, your ears are going to be covered anyway. If you look at most Western NATO style gas masks, your ears are uncovered so you can hear. So that's not a fault with the mask, it's just simply most Russian masks cover your ears with a hood. This has the modelled hood so your ears actually stick out the sides. So that's not a problem with the mask at all. If you're wearing it with full NBC gear, your ears are covered regardless. If you've got the mask on just to protect you from sort of lesser chemical agents, that's actually quite good to have your ears out so you can hear what's going on far better. So I'll test one of these masks now using the usual gas test but what I have to show you first is this thing. What we have here is a Polish mask where they've used the same logic and put the voice diaphragm on it. I'll give this mask its full separate video but you can see it in other nations in the Warsaw Pact they basically had the same idea. So, just to show you what I was saying about the difference with production costs, these ones, the PMG2 actually uses the GP5 type snout, which is a lot smaller. Hopefully that's visible on the camera. Compared to this one, this is a lot bulkier. So, the Polish one isn't actually a PMG2, it has a different voice diaphragm, and it has the M41 sort of OM14 style exhale valve, intake valve. However, the PMG2s have the GP5 ones, but for the video today, we're going to be testing the PMG2. This one will do at a later date. Right, here we go. I've got my Polish ABEC filter on it, so it's a ghost thread, but it fits these old Warsaw Pack masks. As you can see, it pressurises. So, standard test. I'm going to use the um, air freshener and test the mask. And then I'm going to time it a couple of minutes and it'll probably go over, but we'll see if it works. So basically, as I was saying, the PMG2 was quite a clever design. It's very sort of Russian in its attempt at being, um, how do we do stuff as cheaply as possible, but make it effective. So how it works is, as explained in the video, you get the GP5. You can tell it's a GP5 type mask because it's got the same bottom bit. You mould the rubber so it's got a gap there and gap for the ears. You can hear better because you've got no rubber covering your ears. And then you put a voice diaphragm on it here and you use the same voice diaphragm module as you produce for your other masks so there's no extra cost. You just make more of them on your production runs. Other than that, it's a GP5 basically. Hence it being called the GP5M, the GP6 and when issued to soldiers, the PMG2 because it replaced the PMG1. But it's still a very good mask. I believe in many Eastern European nations, I don't know about Russia, 
maybe for reservists, this is still an active issue mask. Whether or not the production runs of these are still quite new, or they're just using old stock where the seals still work, I don't know. Obviously you put a modern filter on it and it works well, but as you can see here, I can't smell any gas. And that's already been one minute. But yeah, the PMG2 is quite an interesting mask. I think the PMG1 looks cooler in a lot of ways, but the PMG2 is kind of a logistics exercise, a cost-cutting one. We've got a very cheap mask we're mass-producing. Can we use that mask's model to essentially make a mask for the army, as well as a civ civil mask, a civilian mask? And this is what this mask is. I said no faults with it. I haven't got a brilliant field of view because it is, after all, a GP5 kind of hood mask. But it's good enough. You can use the rifle iron sights with it, but scopes don't really work with these because you need forward-facing front lenses for a scope like that. Like they are on the MM1, or the flat ones to the eye like the SHMS, which is actually the best design of any mask I've still used for looking through scopes and binoculars. But with the Polish ABEC filter it works fine. So, yeah, to sum it up, the PMG2 is a fairly effective mask, or a very effective mask. Maybe this is the cheapest mass-produced military working mask I've ever seen with a voice diaphragm. As said, the whole process is get our GP5, make the mould slightly different so your ears can stick through it and it can take the voice diaphragm. It's going to take the same voice diaphragm we use in all our other military masks, like the MM1 and SHMS, because it would cost more money to use a different one. Just stick it on there, bam, you're good. You've got your working mask. So, I think that's easily been two minutes now. Let me break the seal and see if I start coughing. Just hoping it's even breaking the seal, me doing that. <coughs> yeah. So. <sighs> yes, this mask works. So, if you wanted a working mask, I know you could have the GP5, but you wanted something of a voice diaphragm, you could just simply get a PMG2, buy some modern ABEC filters, the modern Russian or Polish ones are fine, put them on the mask, and you have a working mask that would protect you for like 15 to 20 pounds for one or two of them. And that's a pr pretty good deal, isn't it? So yeah, this old Soviet surplus stuff still works. Um, just wondering, can we see the date on the rubber at all? I'll cut away to it and I'll show you what the date is on these masks. The black PMG2 is from 1980 and the grey white PMG2 is from 1981 but they have different serial production type numbers on so I imagine they're from a different factory. But there you go, the PMG2 despite being a cheap surplus mask still works very well and it's one of those crazy cheap Soviet innovations that still works well today.